Hello, my name is Eileen. I'm an orthopedic nurse at the UW Hospital and Clinics. I am pleased to share some important information with you as you prepare for your spine surgery. Before you have surgery, you will need to have a complete physical exam. This needs to be done one to four weeks before surgery. It will be arranged by the spine clinic nurse once the date for surgery has been set. The spine clinic nurse will help you decide if the complete physical exam should be done by your primary medical doctor or in the spine clinic. This visit can take from two to six hours. During this appointment, you may also need to have blood drawn, an EKG or electrocardiogram, x-rays, and possibly other tests depending on your medical condition. We will discuss any medications to stop prior to surgery, which may include herbal products, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, anticoagulants, aspirin, and other medications. As with all major surgeries, there are risk factors associated with it. Your doctor or surgeon will discuss these with you. We strongly suggest you quit smoking before surgery. Smoking will impair bone healing and could have a very negative impact on the outcome of your surgery. We also recommend avoiding secondhand smoke for the same reasons. If you need assistance to quit, please speak with your doctor or nurse. The night before surgery, do not drink alcohol after 8 p.m. and do not eat solid food after midnight. Do not drink milk or juice with pulp after midnight. Stop drinking clear liquids four hours before your surgery. Examples of clear liquids include water, popsicles, carbonated beverages, juices without pulp or solid material, tea without milk or creamer, coffee without milk or creamer, jello gelatin, but only if it is homemade, clear protein drinks, and bouillon cube broth or consomme broth. Examples of some things you should not eat or drink are store-bought jello gelatin, jello gelatin with fruit, and canned chicken broth with fat in it. For some spine surgeries, your doctor may require you to do a bowel preparation. You will receive instructions about your bowel preparation if this is needed. It is important that you follow the instructions provided by your doctor. If the instructions are not followed, your surgery may be canceled. A nurse will call you the day before surgery to review instructions, inform you what time to arrive at the hospital, and the location where you should go upon arrival. If your surgery is scheduled on a Monday, then the nurse will call you the Friday before. If you have questions about your pre-op preparation, please be sure to ask the nurse when she calls. You should expect to discharge home after your surgery. The length of time you will spend in the hospital will depend on the type of surgery you have. Your doctor will discuss this with you before surgery. It is uncommon for spine surgery patients to need additional professional assistance at a rehabilitation facility before returning home. However, if placement at a rehabilitation facility is needed, your doctor will discuss this with you. A member of our case management staff can assist you in making these arrangements. Regardless of whether or not you discharge to a rehabilitation facility, it is important to prepare your home in advance of your surgery. To prevent falls at home, remove rugs, clear furniture from pathways, and take steps to declutter your home. Watch out for pets that may run in your path, water spills, bare slippery floors, long cords, such as phone or fan cords, and ice on steps and porches. You and your family play an important role in making plans for your discharge to home. It is very important that you make arrangements for someone to drive you home. If you have a choice, a four-door vehicle with a seat that slightly reclines works best for transportation. If you need help with a ride home, be sure to let your nurse know well in advance. We can help you make arrangements for transportation, but depending on your insurance, there may be a cost to you for this service. You must plan for someone to be with you for the first night you are home. You may want to make arrangements for help with meals, child and pet care, and household chores such as laundry, vacuuming, and yard work. Some patients have found it helpful for family members or friends to prepare and freeze meals in advance. On the day of surgery, plan to arrive at least two hours prior to your scheduled surgery time. Once you are checked in, a nurse will ask you questions about your health and help you get ready for surgery. 
A member of the anesthesia team will meet with you and place an IV for fluids and medication. The length of surgery varies depending on your procedure. Your family will be directed to the surgical waiting area where they will be notified when your surgery is finished. Your doctor will talk with them after your surgery is done. After your surgery, you will be taken to the post-anesthesia care unit, also known as PACU, where staff will monitor you as you begin your recovery from surgery. They will monitor your vital signs, pain level, and neurological status, including strength and sensation. Family and friends are not allowed in the PACU. Once you are stable, usually in one to two hours, you will be transferred to the inpatient orthopedic unit. Family and friends are able to visit you once you are settled in your room. Once you have arrived on the inpatient unit, your nurse will continue to monitor you. In addition to monitoring your vital signs, pain level, and neurological status, they will also check your dressing and will listen to your lungs. We will also monitor urine output and bladder emptying. To do this, we will use a bladder scan machine. It works like an ultrasound machine to measure the amount of urine in your bladder. You may see several pieces of equipment after surgery and you may have several drains in place. The tubes and drains you may see include a face mask or tube under your nose to give you oxygen, a drain in your wound, a catheter to drain urine from your bladder, and an intravenous or IV pump for fluids. To prevent blood clots, you may wear a TED hose or elastic stockings, and SCDs or sequential compression devices, which are leg wraps that inflate and deflate on your legs. It is important to advance your diet slowly after surgery. This allows for your bowels to wake up and helps prevent nausea. You may start on a clear liquid diet depending on the doctor's orders and the nurse's assessment. Your nurse will monitor your readiness for advancing you to solid foods. There are potential complications you may be at risk for after surgery. These include infection, constipation, and pneumonia. Signs and symptoms of infection include persistent fever of 100.5 degrees Fahrenheit or 38.1 degrees Celsius, chills, swelling, redness around your incision, or drainage from your incision. The combination of surgery, narcotic pain medication, decreased activity level, and a change in your diet can play a role in becoming constipated. It is not uncommon to have a problem with your bowels functioning normally after surgery. Medications may be ordered to help prevent or treat constipation. To help you stay regular, eat a high fiber diet, drink plenty of fluids, increase your activity level, and participate in daily physical therapy if ordered by your doctor. The nursing staff will work with you in deciding the best options for dealing with constipation. Coughing and deep breathing after surgery will help your lungs to expand and prevent secretions from pooling in your lungs. The nursing staff will show you how to use a device called an incentive spirometer. An incentive spirometer provides you with a visual marker while taking deep breaths. Increasing your activity level may help prevent pneumonia. To use the incentive spirometer, first, exhale. Place your lips tightly around the mouthpiece. Next, take a slow, deep breath to raise the flow rate guide between the arrows. Hold it. Continue to inhale, keeping the guide as high as you can for as long as you can or as directed by your nurse or respiratory therapist. Then remove the mouthpiece and breathe out as usual. Slowly repeat 10 times each hour while you are awake. One of the biggest concerns after surgery is how pain will be managed. Taking less of your pain medication before surgery may make it easier to manage your pain after surgery. Although everyone's pain tolerance varies, you should expect some degree of pain after surgery. There are several options your doctor may choose for pain management. He may order pain pills or intravenous pain medication. Oral medications may include a combination of fast-acting and extended-release pain pills. IV medications are fast-acting but do not provide long-lasting pain relief. IV pain medications may include pain medications delivered by your nurse from a syringe or from a PCA pump. A PCA pump, or patient-controlled analgesia, 
is a pump that allows the patient to deliver a set amount of IV pain medication at preset time intervals. For safety reasons, it is important for family members not to press the PCA button for the patient. Pressing the button may put the patient at risk for getting too much pain medication and could cause breathing problems. Regardless of what your doctor orders immediately after surgery, our goal is to use pain pills as soon as we can because they can provide longer acting coverage than IV medications. Some patients find relief from methods other than medication. These include ice therapy, deep breathing exercises, distraction, and repositioning. Your nurse may use a combination of these techniques. To aid in relaxation, we offer a special TV channel called Care Channel, which provides a continuous relaxation environment. Your nursing staff can help you find this on the television in your room. You are a very important part of your pain management plan and will need to talk with the nursing staff about setting realistic goals. They will work closely with you to find what works best for you. A good pain management plan will allow you adequate pain control to work with physical therapy and progress your activity level. Good pain control should also allow you to rest comfortably without becoming too sleepy. Everyone responds differently to pain medications and it often takes a period of time to find what works best for each individual patient. You will be taking several medications during your hospital stay. A stool softener will help prevent constipation and promote bowel movements. A course of antibiotics will be administered by an IV. Pain relievers, usually Tylenol, in addition to narcotics may be given. There are other medications your doctor may prescribe based on your medical conditions and surgery outcome. Depending on your surgery, your doctor may decide if you need to follow spine precautions. These precautions include log rolling, not bending forward at the waist, not twisting, and not lifting more than 10 pounds, which is about one gallon of milk. Log rolling is a way of rolling from side to side in bed while keeping your spine in alignment. The staff will teach you how to maintain spine precautions. Please watch the following demonstrations. Log rolling. The log rolling technique is used to avoid twisting at the waist. Roll from side to side in bed while keeping your spine in alignment. No bending. If you need to lift or pick up an object from the floor, squat with your knees bent while keeping your spine straight to pick up the object. Use the strength in your legs. In general, the lifting restriction is no more than 10 pounds or about a gallon of milk. No twisting. Do not twist to reach for objects. Keep your spine straight. Getting up from a chair. When you rise from a chair, scoot forward first, then utilize the strength in your legs and arms rather than bending and pushing off with your back. Once your doctor has decided that you are ready to be discharged, there are many things that need to be done before you leave the hospital. These tasks may take several hours. Your nurse and other health care team members will talk with you about your plan for discharge. Your nurse will give you instructions about your diet, incision care, bathing, driving, limitations in activity, and your follow-up appointment. Your pain medication may change from what you received while in the hospital. The unit pharmacist will review your medications, the name, purpose, dose, how to take them, and side effects. If you currently have a co-payment for medications and plan to have your prescriptions filled at the pharmacy before you leave the hospital, please remember to bring money for your co-payment. If you're unclear about how to pay for your medications, a member of the case management team may help you. Once you are home, the spine clinic staff will be working with you to balance pain medication, pain management, and activity. 
The goal is to work towards tapering you off pain medications by six weeks after surgery. If you need refills on your pain medication, please call the spine clinic 24 to 48 business hours before you run out of your medication. Caring for your incision at home is important to prevent infection. You should assess the incision daily to be sure it is clean and dry and monitor it for swelling and drainage. Do not use any creams, lotions, ointments, or alcohol near or on your incision. You will need to keep a dressing over your incision for three days. The nurse will instruct you how to do dressing changes. She will teach you the normal and abnormal appearance of a post-surgical incision. To keep the incision area clean and dry, wash around the incision area gently with soap and water and then let it air dry. Do not wash directly on the incision. Once the incision area has air dried, cover it with the clean dressing you were provided with at discharge. After three days, you may remove the dressing if there is no drainage from the incision. In general, you may shower five days after surgery. You should not take a tub bath until two weeks after surgery. You may find it difficult to find a comfortable position for sleeping. Placing pillows behind your knees or between your legs may provide some comfort to you. Some patients have questions about when they can resume sexual activity. In general, it depends on the type of surgery you have had and will vary from one to three weeks after surgery or when you feel you are able. Discuss with your doctor when you can return to work. This will depend on the type of surgery you have had, how quickly you are recovering, and the type of work you do. If you have difficulty urinating or controlling your bowel movements after you are discharged, you should call your doctor. You will be provided with phone numbers before you are discharged. Do not drive while you are taking narcotic pain medication and until your reaction time has returned to normal. In general, if you had an anterior or posterior cervical laminoplasty and have a soft collar brace, you may drive two weeks after surgery. If you had a posterior cervical fusion and have a hard collar brace, you may drive six weeks after surgery. Do not drive with a hard collar brace. You must consult with your doctor before driving. You should expect to be walking by the first day after surgery. Depending on the type of surgery you have and how you progress after surgery, you may work with a physical therapist. Other patients will work with the nursing staff to progress their activity. Every spine surgery has a specific walking program associated with it, which you will discuss with your doctor. Begin your walking program once home. The important thing is that you walk on a regular basis and that you gradually increase the distance you walk, but remember, no impact aerobics. This means that walking is your form of aerobic exercise until your doctor tells you otherwise. You should also gradually return to your activities of daily living. Your doctor will talk with you in more detail about the expectations for you. All of our staff are committed to help you recover from surgery and prepare you for your discharge so you can continue your recovery and rehabilitation. We hope this video has provided you with information about what to expect with your upcoming surgery. Please ask staff members any questions you may have. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and hope your surgical experience is a positive one. Thank you for watching.